In the 1980s, a magazine called Today did a poll of their readers. The results of the poll became the 115 best things about Canada. What was number one? Well, it was the Robertson screw and screwdriver, well ahead of the Newfoundland dog and the flag. The Robertson screw has instilled this kind of patriotism and loyalty in just about everyone who's ever used one. Robertson screws are the ones with the square tapered recess. They'll stay on the end of the driver at any angle and can be driven with one hand, even if you're reaching. As a matter of fact, it's a pretty good guess that anyone who thinks they're no good at simple home repairs simply doesn't own a set of Robertson screwdrivers. The square-headed screw was the invention of Peter Limburner Robertson. PL was enough of a visionary to remark that somewhere, somehow, there has to be a better way of making a living than farming. He said this in the 1800s. Sometime around the dawn of the 1900s, PL cut his hand using a slot-type screwdriver, and the world of fasteners hasn't been the same since. The idea of a square socket driver required the usual flash of inspiration and the usual lot of hard work. Experts told PL that he'd never be able to punch a square hole in a piece of cold steel. He solved that problem by tapering the recess. At first, acceptance of the new head was slow, mostly because it was necessary to own a set of the company's screwdrivers to use them. Production was given a shot in the arm, though, when Fisher Bodies chose the fastener to assemble the Canadian Model T Ford and then furniture and boat manufacturers started to stand in line for the screws. Today, one of the company's factories stands next door to PL's original shop in Milton, Ontario. PL set up this plant in the early part of the century, and then he walked the floors of this factory daily. These days, various parts of the operation are shared among different locations, so we can't follow the entire set of steps, but the heart of PL's bright idea is still here. Screws start out as steel wire. Each specific size screw requires wire of an exact diameter. The drawing machine pulls the wire stock through a hardened steel donut with a precise hole in its center. The black stuff curling out of this dye is soap. It's used as a lubricant during drying. The coils of wire are washed and lubricated here. Between each stage, there's a rinse, so there are quite a few steps. You can study basic metallurgy by bending and unbending paper clips. Stressing steel wire can make it quite brittle. Before this wire can be beat into screws, it needs to be annealed. Annealing is the process of heating and cooling metal under controlled conditions. These large furnaces each contain one coil of wire. Inside, the wire is heated to red hot and held for several hours. At the end of the heating period, the wire is allowed to cool slowly. The wire becomes screws in several steps. This is a head punching machine. In the process of making a screw, the wire is formed into shape rather than being cut, milled, or ground. The wire is automatically cut to length, lubricated, and fed into a two-stage punch. This one's operating slowly so that we can see its operation. The first punch forms the end of the wire into a mushroom shape. The second finishes the job. Here's the machine running at full speed. This unit weighs the screws. If they're out of tolerance, it stops the operation. 
The screws leaving these machines have a completely formed head, but no threads. The operation of the threading machine is harder to see. The blanks are marched into the machine and given a quick flick between two rectangular dies with diagonal ridges machined in them. Here the machine's being jogged in stop-start mode. Here it is in full speed operation. The squeeze and roll between the dies forms the threads without cutting anything. The raised parts of the final thread are formed from metal that's been pushed up out of the valleys. The only metal removed from the blank is a little leftover round piece from the sharp end of the thread. This is the hardening area. Annealing the wire allowed it to be punched and formed. The punched and formed screws are now hardened. There's an old expression, hard as nails. In actual fact, nails are sort of soft so that they won't shatter when you whack them with a hammer. Screws can be harder. We really should be saying hard as screws, only people would look at us funny. Hardening is done by heating the metal up again, only this time it's cooled quickly in an oil quench. Following the oil quench, the screws are conveyed through another oven and held at about 400 degrees for a while. The emerging hardened screws can be used as they are or sent to another plant for plating or coating. Even though the fasteners are made under controlled conditions and checked at each stage of manufacture, the batches are still given a real-world spot check. The screw has to be hard enough to make an impression in a block of steel. Bend 15 degrees before it breaks. And withstand 35 inch-pounds of twisting before it breaks. It also has to break in the body, not at the head. PL's little company from Milton now has plants and offices all over North America and currently produces two billion screws a year. What can you say to a product that's already claimed the number one spot in the 115 best things about Canada and has a host of imitators and millions of loyal followers? Well, 